word respect, followed by your message to 71855, and Coliseum personnel will respond as soon as possible. Once again, catch the word respect, followed by your message to 71855. Thanks for keeping Capital Coliseum.
It's a Valentine's Day.
Virginia Tech Pokies. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise and join our players and coaches in honoring America and celebrating its freedom and those who protect it. Let us rise as one nation and one people as the Virginia Tech Board and Color Guard presents tonight's colors and the Heidi Tiger Step Band performs our national anthem. It's a Valentine's Day date in Blacksburg. Coach Joanne P. McCauley takes her fifth-ranked Blue Devils on the road to visit Castle Coliseum. The Blue Devils, led by Elizabeth Williams, put their perfect conference 12-0 record on the line in Blacksburg. However, Monet Tellier and the upset-minded Hokies are poised to derail the Blue Devils. Show the love. It's Duke and Virginia Tech next on the ACC Digital Network. And we welcome you to Blacksburg, Virginia, Castle Coliseum for our matchup tonight, the fifth-ranked Duke Blue Devils against the Hokies from Virginia Tech. We get a look at those ACC standings as we close in on tournament time in Greensboro. Look at what Duke has won, done. 22-1 overall and Virginia Tech 2-10 in conference play. It is great to have you with us for our game tonight. Tom Wormy along with Chelsea Shine, the former standout at Virginia. And Chelsea, what can you say about what the Duke Blue Devils have done. They have run the table so far in conference play. Well, Duke find them, finds themselves at the top of the ACC again. They have an arsenal of weapons between Elizabeth Williams, Chelsea Gray, and Trisha Listen. They're a threat, and they're a team on the mission this year. You mentioned Chelsea Gray. She's the All-American and really makes this offense run for the Blue Devils. Well, Chelsea Gray is just such a complete uh, player. The way she manages this team, she's great with assists. She's able to find her players and her teammates open on the floor, coming off a great game against Maryland, and uh, just an all-around complete player for this Duke team. And in that game against Maryland, she went over 1,000 points for her career as well. Now you go to the other side of Virginia Tech, and Monet Tellier is the player to watch. Sometimes she goes for 20-plus. Sometimes she gets limited offensively. If Virginia Tech's going to have a chance tonight, she's going to have to have a big night. Absolutely. Monet Tellier has been a great player for this team offensively. She's leading them in scoring. And as she goes, this team goes. Coach Dennis Wolf said before the game, when she can stay composed and take good shots, that's when you know she's going to have a great game. So we'll look for that in the start of this game to see how she does. And we are just moments away from tip-off. So let's give you those starting lineups for the visiting Blue Devils. Elizabeth Williams, fifth in the conference in scoring, 15 points per game, leads the way there for Duke, along with her All-American teammate, Chelsea Gray. For Virginia Tech, here is the starting lineup for the Hokies. Ariel Wilson and Lauren Evans. Alyssa Fanine, who's a senior on this team. Portia Hadley gets her third start in a row. And Monet Tellier, we just told you about her, the... Junior from Charlotte, North Carolina, who leads this team in scoring 13 points per game, and she chips in with six rebounds per game as well. For Virginia Tech, it is 8-15 on the season, 7-7 seven and seven here at Castle Coliseum, and 1-4 and four at home in conference play. Coming off the loss Sunday against Virginia, 50-47. to 47. But this Virginia Tech team, don't be misled by their record, Chelsea Shine. 2-10 in conference play, but they went on the road last week and beat Georgia Tech and took Virginia right down to the end of that game. Absolutely. This is a Virginia Tech team that's playing as well as they have all year. Um, and, and it's a team that's on, on a mission as well. And they're going to look to come out here and, and start the game off on the right foot. With Duke, you've, you've got to keep it a close game. And I think being led by Monet Tellier, they have a, a good chance if she can play well. Virginia Tech actually had an eight-point lead early in the second half against Virginia, but did not make a three-pointer in the second half. Went 0 for 5 in the second half for Virginia Tech. The shots just would not fall, and they lose that one by 3, 50 to 47. There is Joanne P. McCauley, 163 wins on the bench as the Duke Blue Devils head coach in her sixth season. 
five times to the NCAA tournament, a couple of conference championships as well, and twice in her career in the ACC she has been named the coach of the year. She continues to pile up the accolades here in the ACC. And across the way, it is Dennis Wolf in his second year. He is 15 and 38 overall, but this is his 18th year overall as a head coach, longtime head coach at Boston University for the men's program as well. And the opening tap is controlled by the Duke Blue Devils in black. Virginia Tech is in the white. You see the Virginia Tech already doubling down. That's something they were working earlier on in shoot around. It's going to be important to get Williams out of her comfort zone. Of course, that leaves open Haley Peters, and she opens the scoring with a three ball. Haley Peters is a threat all around. She can shoot the three, but she's also got the capability to go inside, so you have to respect her all around. She shoots a very solid percentage beyond the arc, 47% coming into tonight's game against Virginia Tech. Duke has won 18 in a row in this series. They've won eight in a row here in Blacksburg as the shot clock goes to four. Here is Tellier. Has to make the move. Lost the handle going up against Gray. It's going to be out of bounds, and it goes back to Duke. The Hoagies will have to look to, to continue a little bit more on their offense and, and work the ball inside. You never want the shot clock to run down like that, so they'll have to get a little bit more fluid in their flex offense. Chloe Wells controlling as the shot clock goes down to 10 for Duke. They're coming off a win Monday against Maryland. A matchup of two top 10 teams out of the ACC and a fresh shot clock. Peters will waste no time and use the glass. Yeah, Haley Peters, she's good for these guys. Coach P said that she's one of the hardest working players she's seen, which is quite a compliment to, play, uh, to pay someone when you are coaching such an elite program as she is. That win against Georgia Tech last Friday night for Virginia Tech. Stopped a nine-game losing streak for the Hokies, who just battled right down to the final whistle on the road against the Yellow Jackets. That was a big confidence boost for this team, I think, um, it coming in. And then you saw they played well against Virginia. They couldn't finish the game. But right before a Duke game, that's what they needed. And look at the bounce that Peters get for the three-pointer. Well, you know, you wonder if the Hokies have focused so much attention on Chelsea Gray and uh, Elizabeth Williams inside. Finding Haley Peters is finding her comfort zone out behind that arc a little bit. So it's Haley Peters 8, Virginia Tech nothing here in the early going. Whistle underneath and a foul goes against Duke. Might have been a moving screen there. You see the Hokies running, uh, as I mentioned, a flex offense where they have a lot of baseline runners and uh, post players popping up high above the arc to give them a little bit more fluidity. So Alyssa Fanine comes out. That foul was assessed to Haley Peters, her first. This is Ariel Wilson. Portia Hadley. Quick shot from Evans. Saw the baseline screen, she was able to get open and hit a nice baseline shot there. Wells trying to work baseline at the other end, ran into a triple team. Evans goes to the floor, held ball situation, and the ball is going back to the Hokies. Absolutely, this is the aggressive start I think the Hokies wanted to be able to hang with Duke, and um, you know, they're putting the pressure on a little bit defensively. Evans has to back it out. Tellier, that's a three-pointer. Peters runs it down. Stripped away. Jones got a piece of it, turns around from the free throw line and connects. The key to this game for Virginia Tech is going to come down to turnovers. They have to be able to take care of the ball. Duke managed to turn them over 27 times last time these two met. And if, if you're going to turn the ball over, Duke is going to make you pay. And as you saw, that's what happened there. That was a game on January 16th in Durham, a 58 to 26 win for the Blue Devils. Tellier has trouble with it. Duke takes it back. 
Tight quarters, Peters to Williams. She got fouled and will earn a couple of free throws. This is a team that just finds each other so well. And and Haley Peters is, Chelsea's not, Chelsea Gray's not the only one that can make assists here. You see Haley, Haley Peters finding her teammate well, setting her up, and Elizabeth Williams is, uh, has such a great ability to finish. This time she did not, but she'll go to the line. 69% of the season for Williams. At her first point of the game, averages 15 points per game, 7.1 rebounds. She's developed into such a, a key player for this team as well. At such a young age, too, they really lean on her for offense, and she just does such a great job battling down low, which makes it easier on your guards. When you have post players who work so hard down low, it creates so many different options for you. And that ball is going to go back to Duke. Blue Devils with that win Monday against number seven, Maryland, 71 to 56. Outscored the Terps 28 to 14 in the paint. Yeah, that was a big game, a big win for this Duke program. And you were able to see how they were, were able to stay poised throughout the whole game and, and had a huge game from Chelsea Gray. Gray to Williams. She just has, they have great chemistry, those two. Chelsea Gray and Elizabeth Williams, she's just able to find her so much. And, and like I said, Elizabeth has a, does a great job finishing around the rim. Chelsea leads the ACC in assists with six per game. That pass by Tellier bounces off of a Duke player, and it's taken back by the Blue Devils. Peters. Jones lost it out of bounds. It will stay with Duke. So we will take our first time out. Step aside. Haley Peters scored the first eight points of the game for Duke. A couple of threes for her. Blue Devils have the lead. There. Kelly Nash with a question. What's the best dunk in ACC history? We're taking a month to find out, and we're calling it Dunkuary. You can follow it every day on our Twitter account at the ACCDN. It's Dunkuary on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Out with the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. 10 entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar. Free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday. It's all good here. Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. I'm Jeff Michelle. Coming up Friday at noon on ACC Live, Mike Jaminski is here to break down all of the weekend's action, including the big one between Miami and NC State. ACC Live tip off tomorrow at noon on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. What's better, bigger or smaller? Bigger! So, which would you rather have, a big treehouse or a small treehouse? If it's big enough, you can have a disco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Why do you not want a smaller treehouse? Because it wouldn't be able to fit a flat screen TV in, and the TV would be about this big, and you would have to hold the wire. In the position you would hold the wire, you wouldn't be able to see the TV. That's a pain in the buns. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's not complicated. Bigger is better. And AT&T has the nation's largest 4G network. It's the ACC. It's live. It's ACC Live. Weekdays at noon on the ACC Digital Network. It's everything ACC fans want. Highlights, moments, interviews, and a lot of laughs. It's ACC Live weekdays at noon, only on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. We'll see you then live at noon on the ACC Digital Network. Back here in Blacksburg. Hokies trailing by 12. That was Lloyd going to the basket, and she got fouled. Hokies, if they're able to break this pressure and get some good looks defensively, that, uh, offensively, excuse me, that'll be a key for them. The Dukes, the Dukes full court pressure is what where they get a lot of their turnovers, so Hokies need to be able to handle that. So here is Alexis Lloyd at the free throw line, freshman from Chicago. These are only her eighth and ninth free throw attempts of the season as Hannah Young will enter the game for the Hokies and Lauren Evans will step out for a moment with 15, 15 to go here in the first half. Hannah Young from Newcastle, Australia. Making quite the trip to be <laughs> part of this program. A 
freshman in this Hokie program. Gray at the other end. Cannot convert. Ariel Wilson comes away with it. Tellier has to put on the brakes. Young trying to get in the flow, and she does. That is a two-pointer out of the corner. That's where she's good. She's good from those corners. We got a chance to see her earlier in shoot around. She was the first one out here working around the perimeter. Williams to Peters. Ran into Tellier, and the foul will be against the Hokies. Tellier was able to slide over and help, but not there in time. Here's Hannah Young. Hannah Young with the great three, but her foot's on the line, so it'll only be a two. But like I said before, she's just great from the perimeter, and, and that's something that she's been working on and contributes as a first year on this team. Don't forget to tweet us at the ACCDN. We are completely interactive. Tom Wormy, Chelsea Shine, and our outstanding ACC Digital Network production crew here in Blacksburg. Let us know what you think of the broadcast, your input on the Hokies, the Blue Devils, or anything going on in ACC country. Haley Peters makes two. She's off to a great start here offensively with 10 points already. The 18th time this season that Peters has gone into double figures for Duke, which is 22 and one. The only loss at number three, UConn, earlier in the season, and they're gonna get the ball back here. It's another turnover for the Hokies. They've gotta be able to take care of this ball here, especially when they're careless turnovers. That's really gonna come back to haunt them. Gray, off the glass, she misses. Duke now five of 10 from the floor, leading 16 to five. This is Nia Evans, also in the game for the Hokies as the shot clock goes to seven. Wilson, trying to work on Jones. She's fairly new to their starting lineup, but, but Ariel Wilson has contributed a lot. The team's been playing much better since she's joined the starting lineup against Georgia Tech. Peters, great pointer, her third of the game. Peters is feeling it. She's off to, off to a great start here for this Tech team. The Hokies are gonna have to adjust and be able to find her respecting that perimeter shot like we had talked about earlier. She is now three for three from long distance and 13 points here in the first half for Haley Peters, the junior from Red Bank, New Jersey. Evans has the answer. That's where they're looking to exploit the Duke Blue Devils up in that high post area. As we said before, they're running that flex offense and the baseline runners go baseline and then that leaves some room up at the high post area for openings. Jones, the freshman from Irving, Texas makes her way to the rim. She's been playing well for the for the Blue Devils as well, able to take people off the dribble. She's averaging close to eight points per game and four rebounds and has four points so far tonight. Lloyd misses from long range. New shot clock for the Hokies. The Hokies will need to, to do a good job on the boards here as well. They were out rebounded by 15 last time they played Duke. You saw a great offensive rebound for them and that will help them a lot down the stretch for second chance points. And there's one right there by Alyssa Fenine. That all came out of the, the offensive rebound and the second chance points there. Hokies trying to hang with the number five team in the nation, Duke, which has won six in a row and seven in a row in conference play on the road. They are a perfect 12 and 0 on the season against the ACC opponents. Elizabeth Williams turns the basket. She got hit and will go to the free throw line for a couple of free throws. When we come back, Haley Peters continues to rack them up. 13 points in the game so far for Peters. Hey there, Kelly Nash with a question. What's the best dunk in ACC history? We're taking a month to find out, and we're calling it Dunkuary. You can follow it every day on our Twitter account, at the ACCDN. It's Dunkuary on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. 
out with the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. 10 entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar, free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday, it's all good here. Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. I'm Jeff Michelle with another ACC Now and Then brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Duke's Seth Curry and his brother Stefan are now the highest scoring brother combo in NCAA Division I history. The sharpshooting Currys passed North Carolina great Tyler Hansbro and his brother Ben. Tyler, of course, is the ACC's all-time leading scorer with 2,872 points. Share the love this Valentine's with a free dessert when you make reservations on rubytuesday.com. It's not February, it's Dunkuary. All month we are figuring out the best dunks in ACC history. Follow us on Twitter at the ACCDN or go to your YouTube page to vote. Dunkuary, the best dunks in ACC history all month long on the ACC Digital Network. Brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Fans of all ages have turned out for some ACC women's basketball action. Just under 12 minutes to go. Here in the first half, Tom Wormy along with Chelsea Shine, the former Virginia standout. And we want to welcome Chelsea to the ACC Digital Network family. It is great to have you along. Well, thanks. It's great to be a part of it. I keep saying if I can't be on the court anymore, <laughs> I much prefer this front row seat here on the sidelines. Now, wait a minute. You told me that you went back to some Virginia practices and I made did. sure that I they did. were doing exactly what Coach Boyle told them to. I did. Got to keep them on a tight leash. Make sure they're doing all right. Elizabeth Williams is at the free throw line. Whistle after the shot. So a lane violation against the Hokies will give Williams one more attempt. Can't be giving people, Duke players second, second chances here at the line. Especially Williams. She has a very unique free throw shooting form, but it seems to work for her. She's, she gets up on her toes and then releases from there. Allison Vernaray has entered the game for Duke. She's the senior. The lone from senior. From France, yes. In fact, during the summer, Duke made a trip to Italy and France, so she got to return to her home country and put the skills of her team on display for the international community. Elizabeth Williams has made all four of her free throw attempts. The Hokies bring the shot clock inside of 10 again. This is Evans. Young, that's a three. There's Ten. another offensive rebound by Tellier. They got to keep crashing these boards for their second chance points. Second attempt at a three is no good, and Peters goes up and grabs it. So Haley Peters leads the way early for Duke with 13 points, four rebounds as well, three of three from long distance. That turnaround spins out for number 33 for Duke. Evans trying to work in transition. Duke hustles back to stop that momentum. Absolutely. I hope he's able to push it a little bit, giving Duke a taste of their own medicine here, but Duke able to get back on the defensive end in their zone. Very active zone. They're, they're long players. They manage to get their hands on a lot of the passes that their opponents make. Shot clock going down here. It's a good drive, but no can do for Portia Hadley. Taken away by Duke. There's another turnover. Lexus Jones just not looking. Well, Haley Peters shooting the lights out here at Castle Coliseum. Three for three from long distance. Haley Peters, like we said before, she's able to score from all areas of the floor. She can take you off the dribble, shoot behind the arc, and she has a great mid-range jumper at all. She's leading the Blue Devils here uh, in scoring and has created a nice buffer for them in the early lead. Those 13 points already above her season average of 11 and a half per game. Tellier, who has not scored yet, travels with the ball. And you sense a little frustration coming from Tellier here in the Hokies. Yeah, absolutely. Tellier needs to look to create shots for herself, but she's not going to be able to do this alone. So she really, as her teammates get involved, they need to um, 
they need to have good poise about themselves around the rim and, and Tellier too, she can't get frustrated. Dennis Wolf said when she stays composed and takes good shots, that's when she's playing well and therefore the team will most likely be playing well. Williams tried to dump it inside Bernaray, threw it back out as she was going out of bounds. Chelsea Gray leads the ACC in assists and steals. And there's an assist of Verna Ray, blocked out of bounds. And Duke will keep it with five seconds left on the shot clock. Duke will, have, Duke will look have to take a quick shot here. There's a pass to Alyssa Verna Ray. Again, found by Chelsea Gray. Goes up strong, but it was blocked. Shot clock to two. And Duke will not get the shot away. I don't know if Verna Ray was aware of the shot clock. I thought maybe that was a little bit of some miscommunication there. Dennis Wolf, who was also working with the men's program here at Virginia Tech, he was the director of basketball operations for a season before taking over as the head coach of the women's program. And now we get a whistle inside. It is official Benita Spence who wants to talk with her fellow officials. Is Mark Hardcastle on the left? Luis Gonzalez, also official for tonight's game. You know, I talked to Dennis Wolf before during shoot around. I said, What has it been like for you going from coaching men for so long and coaching women for your first two years? It's, it's very different coaching men and women. And he said, It's a learning process. I'm trying to manage the team, but it's definitely something that I am learning about every day. Double team on Tellier. Ray got a piece of it into the backcourt, and it is over and back, and the ball goes back to Duke. It's going to be another turnover. The Hokies are going to have to try to get that under control. A couple of careless ones that were not forced by Duke. That is now eight turnovers for the Hokies here in the first half. In the game time, you like to keep your, your turnovers usually 12 to 14. And... Um, that's a number that, if you're the Hokies, you really have to aim for, but they're making it tough on themselves here. Another second point, second opportunity, excuse me, for the Blue Devils here. Williams. Trying to back her way down, drew a double team off of Vernaray and back to the Hokies. This team plays with such great chemistry. I'm impressed by the way, you talk so much about how Chelsea Gray you know, nationally ranked in, in her assists, but but everybody has such a great feel for where their teammates are. And you see the post players making great passes as well. Vernere unable to finish, but you saw Elizabeth Williams looking over her shoulder. She saw her there. Eight and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Duke has cashed in with eight points off of those turnovers by the Hokies. This is Young in the corner. That's where she hit her shot earlier in the game. Shot clock to 10. Here is Evans. Fight for the loose ball won by Duke. Rache Jackson grabbed it. Williams from the free throw line distance. She can hit that. She's not just low post. She's got range. The high post area, in fact, she can shoot the three. She doesn't do it often, but, but she has done it. Duke gets it right back. Jones lost it out of bounds back to the Hokies. So another timeout here in Blacksburg. Elizabeth Williams with some daylight. She knocks it down for Duke. Delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. Ten entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar. Free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday. It's all good here. Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. I'm Jeff Fischel. Coming up Friday at noon on ACC Live, Mike Jaminski is here to break down all of the weekend's action, including the big one between Miami and NC State. ACC Live tip-off tomorrow at noon on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday.
What's better, bigger or smaller? Bigger! So which would you rather have, a big tree house or a small tree house? If it's big enough, you can have a disco. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why do you not want a smaller tree house? Because it wouldn't be able to fit a flat screen TV in, and the TV would be about this big, and you would have to hold the wire, and the position you would hold the wire, you wouldn't be able to see the TV. That's a pain in the buns. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's not complicated. Bigger is better. And AT&T has the nation's largest 4G network. A reminder that the ACC Digital Network is fully interactive. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and of course, our official YouTube channel, where you can leave comments and subscribe for instant notifications about our great content. The ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Welcome back to Blacksburg Castle Coliseum. Opened way back in 1962. Tom Wormy, Chelsea Shine, and our outstanding ACC Digital Network production crew on hand here in Blacksburg. 25-9 is the advantage for Duke. They won the last meeting between the teams this season on January 16th. This rivalry goes back to 1981, that first ever meeting won by Virginia Tech, and that was Young who went down hard under the basket as Williams got a piece of it. Duke in transition, Williams fills the lane. Well, it was only a matter of time before Williams got a block. She's averaging three per game, so it was bound to happen at some point. And then you see her manage to run all the way down the court uh, and beat uh, many of the players. She's, uh, she's a quick post player, and that's what you like to see from your post players, their ability to run the floor. How about 57 straight games with a block for Elizabeth Williams, a sophomore for Duke? Absolutely. She's setting and breaking records at Duke. Um, ranked ninth nationally in, in blocking. There's some contact underneath. It was Evans and Haley Peters. Second on Nia Evans. Junior from Decatur, Georgia. Virginia Tech won two of the first four meetings between these two teams, and Duke has reeled off 18 straight, but they turn it back to the Hokies here with 7.03 to go in the first half. Well, that was a good stop by the Hokies. The last time these two teams played, they actually held Duke, um, allowing only 56 points, which is 22 points below their average. Right now, they're on track to score a little bit more than that, but that's something that this team was proud of, that they were able to hold the, the, the Blue Devils under their average scoring wise. Speaking of defense, Duke has not allowed a hokey point in the last five and a half minutes. Virginia Tech has also missed its last five shots. Trying to beat the clock. Alyssa Fanine. Saw another shot clock violation there, but she was able to get it off in time. That always gives your team a nice little spark. Fanine, who was a key part of that win at Georgia Tech last Friday night on the road for the Hokies. Williams extending the range in 12 points. She can do that. Need to find her everywhere. She's not just a player that you need to battle with down low, but you'll need to come up and respect her shot from the high post. 26 straight games into double figures in ACC play for Williams. She's got 12 in the last four coming on jumpers from 15 feet and beyond as the Hokies give it back to Duke on the traveling violation. Portia Hadley will come back in for the Hokies. Again, Monet Tellier, who is the leading scorer for Virginia Tech, yet to point a point in the box score. And also Uju Ugoka, who is another leading scorer on this team, close to 13 per game, has missed the last three games now with an E injury for the Hokies. Ugoka had a, a 10 rebounds the last time they played the Blue Devils, which was big for the Hokies. She's not able to play tonight, so they'll, they'll look to have to find those rebounds from another player on the team. There's Elizabeth Williams scoring on the inside. She can finish so well. There's a timeout taken by the Hokies. Well, how about this, Chelsea? Elizabeth Williams has the last 10 points for Duke, and she's done it from the inside, as we just saw but she's also extended the shooting range also. Absolutely. They're versatile. Haley Peters, there she is. She can shoot from the high post. She can score down low. She can shoot the three. Maybe we'll see her do that tonight. But she and Haley Peters have, have each gotten off to a great start. 
I think that's something that makes this Duke Blue Devils team so special. They're so versatile. Uh, you see Chelsea Gray having a 28-point performance against Maryland earlier this week but it doesn't necessarily always need to be one player. All of these players are capable of putting up big numbers and, um, and that, that's what makes this team elite and one of, the, one of the best in the country. So Williams for Duke is perfect from the floor, five for five, and she's made all four of her free throw attempts, goes out of bounds and stays with the Hokies. So Williams leads with 14 points. Haley Peters has 13, four for Jones. And those are the three scorers here in the first half for Duke. So the majority of the points coming from Williams and Peters. For the Blue Devils here in the course of the first 20 minutes. Alyssa Benign has four. She's the leading scorer for Virginia Tech. Five different players have scored for the Hokies. Well, Tellier doesn't lead this team in scoring. Benign is another player who she turns it almost that court turns it over there, but Fenine's a player who can get going as well and provides this team with some leadership. So Virginia Tech and its head coach Dennis Wolf has taken another timeout, 4.58 to go. And Chelsea Shine, while you and I were talking prior to the game, if you're gonna stay in the game with Duke, you've got to keep that lead within striking distance. And right now Duke is starting to extend it here, 31-11 with just under five minutes Absolutely. to go. Absolutely. If you're, if you're Virginia Tech, you have to figure out a way to get yourself back into the game and get stops. The stops and then trying to control your turnovers is going to be two things that, that Virginia Tech's going to need to focus on for the rest of this half to try to get some momentum going in to the second half. This, this Duke Blue Devil team, when they get a lead on a team, especially at double-digit points, they have a tendency to just extend and extend, and, and it can be – it can put a – kind of stop your momentum if you're the other team. So the Hokies are going to need to find an answer here, get a couple stops, string something together. If they can get some momentum going into the second half, it could be better for them. Well, Duke has had the halftime lead in 20 games so far this season. They have converted each and every time. A perfect 20-0 with the halftime lead. They have the 31-11 advantage here as the clock continues to tick in Blacksburg. Duke in the black, Hokies in the white. They've got the play for K pink on. And Chloe Wells gets into the box score with that jumper. Well, Duke's ability to hit the three is something that you need to respect. They have four different players hitting over 40% from the three. Trisha Liston, Chelsea Gray, Haley Peters, and as you just saw, Chloe Wells. You'll see a lot of the teams wearing the pink in the initiative for breast cancer awareness in remembrance of former NC State great Kay Yao. Showcasing women's basketball around the country. It's it's a great initiative, and I think the girls have a lot of fun getting to be a part of awareness for, for cancer. Coach Yao with over 600 ACC victories in her career on the bench for NC State. Shot clock to five. Tellier tries to go through a double team. Can't do it. Gray has it. Gray changed direction. Williams with a one-handed rebound. Had a hokey Portia Hadley hanging on her right arm, and that'll be the foul call. When the Blue Devils are taking shots, if you're a Hokies player underneath, especially bat battling with Elizabeth Williams or Haley Peters, you need to, the second that shot is released, turn and start pushing them back as far as you can get them. Uh, they're so good at going to the boards offensively that if you can't get them out of there early, they're, they're very capable of rebounding. Off the mark for Haley Peters, but another offensive rebound will give them a second chance. So Wells will call out the offensive set for Duke. Leading 34-11. Tellier had it for a moment, now knocked it away and stole it from Peters. That's a good job of doubling down on the post, and Tellier was able to rotate down to get in the help and take the ball from Peters. Evans from the corner. Tellier tapped it to her teammate, Portia Hadley. Thirty-three percent so far here in the first half for the Hokies. Duke up over fifty-seven percent. They enjoy the lead. Little turnaround, no roll for Evans. That high post is an area that they're finding has some openings against this. Blue Devil defense, they just need to be able to hit some open shots. 
The only thing that can stop Chelsea Gray is her teammate, Haley Peters. A little miscommunication there. Tried to feed Williams, who saved it to Peters. Jones before the shot. Whistle. And a foul against Duke. Timeout with 2.42 to go here in the first half from Blacksburg, Virginia. It is Duke on top of Virginia Tech. What is the best dunk in ACC history? All month long, we want to find out. I'm Jeff Michelle, and welcome to Dunkuary. This is the month of Dunkuary, the fourth day of Dunkuary, or as I like to say, Dunkuary 4. Go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash ACCDN, and vote for the best in ACC history. Hit subscribe while you're there. Out with the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. Ten entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar. Free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday. It's all good here. Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. Good afternoon, Chase Sapphire, this is Casey from Springfield. Oh, oh. Hello? Yes, I didn't realize you'd be talking to an actual person. You don't need to come here, I'm here. Reach a person, not a prompt, whenever you call Chase Sapphire. Our next live women's basketball game on the ACC Digital Network comes your way Thursday, February 28th. Boston College heads to Chapel Hill to face North Carolina. That's a 7 p.m. tip on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Sylvia Hatchell got career victory number 900 against Boston College in Chestnut Hill. Now they'll play in Chapel Hill on the ACC Digital Network brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Hatchell becoming just the third women's coach to reach the 900th milestone and just recently surpassed Jody Conrad to be in sole possession of second place in wins. Joanne P. McCauley has done amazing things at all of the stops. She's also been the head coach at Maine and Michigan State. Six times to the NCAA tournament as the head coach of Maine and five times for Michigan State. Putting her, her team in a great position this year to head back to the NCAA tournament and make a, a deep run into the tournament is what their goal is. Remember the ACC Digital Network brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Stay in contact with us on Twitter as well at the ACCDN. We want to hear your feedback as Duke has the lead over Virginia Tech here in the first half. Final couple minutes. Foul called before the shot. Some people thought that could have been a walk. She was fouled beforehand, though. It's a first foul on Alyssa Fanine. So that is the bonus situation now for Duke. 17 fouls against the Hokies. point of the game for Rache Jackson from Midwest City, Oklahoma and a junior for this Duke team. Elizabeth Williams is getting a breather on that Duke bench. Pretty good stat line so far for Williams, right she, Chelsea? She sure does. She's perfect from the field. Five for five and perfect at the free throw line. Four for four with 14 points leading her team right now. Virginia Tech in big time need of some offense, and that is over and back, so Duke will take over control. And a timeout on the floor. That's their 14th turnover in one half. That's a few more than they would have liked to have at this point, and a few of them we've seen have been over the backside of the court there. They're going to have to be a little bit more poised here to finish out this half, and I'd like to see them be more poised in the second half as well. Well, Chelsea, you want to catch the ACC Women's Basketball Tournament March 7th through the 10th, Greensboro Coliseum. Ticket books can be purchased through Ticketmaster. 
Charge by phone at 800-745-3000 or the Greensboro Coliseum Advanced Box Office or online at the ACC.com. The 14th straight year in Greensboro, the Maryland Terrapins, the defending champions in the ACC. They're second in the last four years as they beat Georgia Tech in the thrilling championship game. It sure was. I'm excited. The ACC is the type of conference on any given night, anyone can beat anyone. At ACC tournament, anything can happen. And you saw it last year as Duke was ranked number one going into the tournament, taken out by number nine, NC State, which was a big shock to many. That was the first time in tournament history that the nine seed had defeated the number one seed. Duke went on to play in the NCAA tournament, losing in the regional final to Stanford, 81 to 69, after wins against Samford, Vanderbilt, and St. John's. You can bet this Duke team is on a mission not to let that happen again this year. Maybe coming into the tournament with a little chip on their shoulder. So Evans back in for the Hokies for the final 159 with Chloe Wells, the junior from Colton, California at the free throw line. Just trips seven and eight to the line on the season, but she gets them both and now has four points in the first half. Elizabeth Williams, the leading scorer for Duke with 14. Alyssa Fanine with four leads the way for Virginia Tech. And Monet Tellier, the leading scorer for the Hokies, not in the box score yet. They're going to need to look to get her going, and she's going to need to kind of find her own rhythm and get into some sort of rhythm to provide some sort of offense for this, this Hokies team. Alyssa Fanine from the corner, we talked about her. She is huge in this team as well in, in providing not only offense but leadership for the Hokie team. That's a big three from the corner for Fanine. So Fanine now with seven points. Moore. Back to the Hokies. Evans wants to run. This is Wilson along the baseline. Foul coming up. That's on Jones, her first. Exactly one minute to go here in the first half. Duke out in front. Steal on the inbounds by Jackson. That's a dangerous pass to make when you're being defended so closely like that. Unfortunately, I don't think the Hokies had any other options. That'll be a foul on Tellier, her second. She was making sure that Rache Jackson could not get the shot away. So Jackson back to the free throw line. Her only two points in the game have come from free throw shots just a couple of moments ago. Hokies will bring Nia Evans back in. Kalia Johnson also in for the De Blue Devils. Anticipation and the steal from Jackson, trying to beat the defender. Got She'll, fouled. To the line again she goes. She's camping out up there. Hokies are not going to be able to continue to foul. They need to play good defense. Nia Evans just picked up her third personal foul. That'll put Rache Jackson back at the free throw line. Looks pretty good after coming back from an ACL injury last February. Twenty-nine point one seconds to go here in the first half. It has been all Duke. Haley Peters scored the first eight points of the game for the Blue Devils, and they have not looked back. Now four points in the first half for Rache Jackson. 
When you're able to get yourself into such a great lead like this, getting contributions from so many different players, you're able to sit down some of your starters and rest them a little bit. But not only are they getting to rest, you're getting some other players some good game experience. Um, and, and just kind of all around letting everybody get some time in the game, which is huge as you progress as a program um, and, and as you're preparing and getting late into the season. Shot clock is off, 14 seconds to go in the half. Fanine. Evans needs to shoot, little runner, but she traveled before releasing. Now there is 3.1 for Duke to get an offensive chance, and Coach McCauley will call a timeout. Well, Duke's defense is stifling, and it's absolutely what, what transitions into their offense. It fuels their offense, and they're just such a long defensive players, and they're, they're able to, to put so many stops together that really fuels them on the offensive end, which we've seen here in their 40-point their performance already. Duke only allows 50 points per game to its opposition. That is the best in the conference and fifth best in the entire country for Coach McCauley and her defensive unit. They only allow 50 points. Well, they managed to keep Virginia Tech to 26 points last time out, which is unfortunately a school record low for the Hokies. I don't think that was necessarily what they were going out to do, but like we said, their defense, they turn you over and then they make you pay for it on the offensive end. And um, they're, they're just, they're such a great defensive team all around. 19 points off of Hokie turnovers there in the first half. Would have counted. So Chloe Wells hits the front rim, bounces off, but Coach McCauley and her team will go to the locker room with a 40-14 lead. Your impression of what Duke was able to do in the first 20 minutes, Chelsea? I think Duke just did a great job starting off offensively early. Haley Peters and Elizabeth Williams came up huge and provided so much offense for the team. Their full court pressure was able to turn over the Hokies, and as well in the half court, they had a few shot clock violations. They're going into this locker room with a lot of momentum and on track to, to have an 80 to 90 point game here. Well, we hope you're enjoying the game here on the ACC Digital Network. Our new show, ACC Live, is three weeks in. Here's Jeff Bichel on What's Trending. And welcome to ACC Live. It's not just Tuesday for our trending show. It's Fat Tuesday. It's always a good excuse to have gumbo, in my opinion. Anton Jameson said he thinks Jordan... Kelly, what do you think? He thinks Jordan could still actually play as a role player in the NBA. Yeah, I bet he could still ball harder than half the league today. It's a big claim. <laughs> I do know when he was 40, he could still ball. Now, Longhorn Rusty 81. Another one, Eric Montross versus Christian Leitner. Now, this... There will be blood. 1992. <laughs> and broken bones for that yeah. <laughs> The freshman is something special. Duke Johnson was the ACC Rookie of the Year last year. Over 2,000 all-purpose yards. Now, some people not only think he can win the Heisman, they are backing it up. An online sports book has Duke Johnson at 12 to 1 odds to win the Heisman. Kelly, what do you think? I like him a lot, but I like what lot. I want to know, where's Sammy Watkins? Today is Super Bowl Media Day. It's the day when reporters who don't care about sports <laughs> ask questions that have nothing to do with the Super Bowl. Seriously. Kelly, if you could ask. It's a circus. Just one player on either of these teams. Okay. Who would it be, and what's the one question you'd want to ask? Colin Kaepernick, puppies or kittens? Puppies or kittens? <laughs> That's it. You get fluff on that day. You it's do. Insanity. And nothing's fluffier than puppies or kittens. Uh, also buzzing today, a sport that's not getting enough attention for Olympic organizers, wrestling. They've decided to drop wrestling as an Olympic sport after the 2016 games. This is one of the original events, and I don't just mean 1896. No, I mean like ancient Greece. The original Olympics had wrestling. Of course, the ancient Olympics also had a festival where 100 oxen were sacrificed in honor of a god, so I guess change can be good, but in this case, it's not. I'm Jeff Michelle. From all of us here at the ACC Digital Network, we want to wish you a, wait, Happy Valentine's Day. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's Valentine's Day. I'm in trouble. What's better, bigger or smaller? Bigger! So which would you rather have, a big tree house or a small tree house? If it's big enough, you can have a disco. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why do you not want a smaller tree house? Because it wouldn't be able to fit a flat screen TV in, and the TV would be about this big, and you would have to hold the wire, and the position you would hold the wire, you wouldn't be able to see the TV. That's a pain in the buns. Yep, yep, yep. It's not complicated. Bigger is better. And AT&T has the nation's largest 4G network. You can't keep greatness in a box, so we won't. The ACC mobile app presented by Outback Steakhouse. Imagine seeing this on this. That's greatness. 
For the ACC schools you live for, it's the app you can't live without. Available on your iPhone, iPad, Android, and Nokia Lumia Windows phone. The ACC mobile app. Live games, video, scores, stats, news, and greatness. Search ACC Sports on your mobile device. Welcome back to Blacksburg. Duke has the halftime lead, looking to win its seventh in a row and eighth in, the ro in a row in ACC play on the road for the Blue Devils. Well, all season long, our own Debbie Antonelli has been able to sit down with some of the stars of the ACC. Tonight, she sits down with Virginia Tech's Monet Tellier. Debbie and Monet, break it down. Monet Tellier, one of Virginia Tech's finest. Got the whole skill set. Going to put it on display here for us. You're going to break down some tape for us, Mo? I will. All right. Well, let's get at it. Let's get cracking right here. You know, we hear coaches say all the time they need their post players to run the floor hard. Would this be a good example of why you run the floor hard? Because yes, because Tori took the guard that should be guarding me and that left both the post players come out or both post players up there with me. So if I didn't hit that three, I could have taken one of the post players off the dribble and created for, if not myself, then one of my other teammates. Now, I'm not a person that really likes defense very much. That was easy. Look at this play right here. You don't give up on the play. You challenge and then you make a, a great block. Coach Wolf, he's got to be pleased with that. Yeah, he was. He won't show it right now, but um, he was. He was pretty happy. I mean, she had me. She had me going to the middle, and he's a big thing on not, uh, not allowing middle penetration. But I knew that she was left-handed, and she seldomly shoots with her right hand. So I was in the right spot at the right time. Okay, here you're working off a down screen. What's your read right here? Because a lot of times people come up the inside. Why'd you go the other way? Because that's where the defense is already standing. If I went to the middle, then she was already going to be right there. And I wasn't going to be as open as I was. Now, Mo, when you get in the traffic like this and you feel contact, what's important for you to be able to do to finish your shot? Maintain my balance. Um, right there, I remember watching film after, after this game with Coach Joyce. And he commended me for taking the extra dribble. Because if I go off one foot here, it's just going to be a foul instead of an one. So I kind of hesitated and took the extra dribble and I stepped through to, to be able to get the N1. Well, Mo, I think you got bright things on the future for Virginia Tech if they get behind your shoulders and you can take them places, can't you? I can. You excited with about the, with, with the help of my teammates. Can, can't be a woman, so I need my teammates as well. Well, we thank you for taking the time to come in here and break it down and give us a little education on Hokie basketball. Thank you. And Chelsea, what is it like for you to see Debbie sit down with some of the great players in the ACC? You're just a year removed from playing against these fantastic players who have such amazing skills, including Monet Tellier. Absolutely. Well, it's so much fun when you get to sit down with Debbie Antonelli and break down the game. But Monet Tellier, as you saw her break down the game, has such a great ability defensively and offensively to get to the rim, to shoot from the outside. But what I'm noticing, she's only taken one shot tonight. She's leading her team in scoring. She had 13 points and eight boards last time they played Duke. She's got to find a way to get herself to the rim and finish. And she needs to take more shots. That certainly is the thing that is glaring and missing from the box score for Virginia Tech. Do you think Dennis Wolf is putting the responsibility squarely on her shoulders for the second half? I would think that he's probably in there challenging her right now, but he's probably challenging the whole team. It's it's not all going to fall on her shoulders because this is a game, a team effort. Uh, Alyssa Fanine has stepped up big, and she might have the hot hand this game, so they might look to rely on her a little bit more in the second half. All right, we'll see what happens in the second half here on the ACC Digital Network. Brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. We will step aside. More halftime to come. Duke has the lead over Virginia Tech. Hey there. Kelly Nash with a question. What's the best dunk in ACC history? We're taking a month to find out, and we're calling it Dunkuary. You can follow it every day on our Twitter account, at the ACCDN. It's Dunkuary on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Out with the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. 10 entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar, free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday, it's all good here. 
Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. I'm Jeff Michelle. Coming up Friday at noon on ACC Live, Mike Jaminski is here to break down all of the weekend's action, including the big one between Miami and NC State. ACC Live tip off tomorrow at noon on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. What's better, bigger or smaller? Bigger! So which would you rather have, a big treehouse or a small treehouse? If it's big enough, you can have a disco. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why do you not want a smaller treehouse? Because it wouldn't be able to fit a flat screen TV, and then the TV would be about this big, and you would have to hold the wire, and the position you would hold the wire, you wouldn't be able to see the TV. That's a pain in the buns. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's not complicated. Bigger is better, and AT&T has the nation's largest 4G network. We hope you're enjoying your Valentine's Day and into the evening here. Halftime in Blacksburg here on the ACC Digital Network brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. And Duke has the lead over Virginia Tech. Let's go around the ACC. It's a big night with four other games to tell you about. And we'll start with Virginia going on the road at Boston College. And Virginia's looking for the season sweep here, but the Eagles having something to say about it at Connie Forum with the lead at halftime. Elsewhere, it's the Clemson Tigers and number seven, Maryland. That also at halftime at Comcast Center, Maryland with the lead. Now, this is an interesting game, Chelsea. The Wolfpack and the Seminoles, it's a close one at halftime. Absolutely. The Wolfpack had the lead by 12 points last time, these two teams, and Florida State managed to come back. So I think NC State's playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder right now. Florida State, one of the four teams ranked in the top 25 for the ACC. There's another one, North Carolina, 39 to 21. That's the lead at Carmichael for the Tar Heels. As we get a look at the ACC standings, Duke and North Carolina and Maryland. Duke still undefeated, well on their way to win number 13 in conference play. North Carolina 10 and two, Maryland also at 10 and two, and Florida State not far behind. All right, time for Chelsea's all ACC team, and you start with the player of the year from last season, who was also the MVP no. of the ACC tournament. Melissa Thomas, she's huge for Maryland. They look to her for so much for her scoring and just her ability. She's a big guard. She can not only score, but she can rebound and plays great defense as well. So she's one of the players that I had at the top of my list as well. Leonor Rodriguez for me too. Florida State, she's tripled her scoring average over the last year and has led this Florida State team back up into the top four. They didn't have the year they wanted to last year, but she's managed to get them back. Tiana Hawkins for Maryland, of course, another key player for the Maryland Terrapins. Uh, she's just such a hard player offensively and defensively. She welcomes the physicality. And then Elizabeth Williams and Chelsea Gray, who we're seeing here tonight for Duke, they are standout players as well. Elizabeth Williams leading the way with 14 points in the first half for Duke. We're coming back to Blacksburg right after this. Hey there, Kelly Nash with a question. What's the best dunk in ACC history? We're taking a month to find out, and we're calling it Dunkuary. You can follow it every day on our Twitter account, at the ACCDN. It's Dunkuary on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Out with the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. Ten entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar. Free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday. It's all good here. Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. I'm Jeff Eschel with another ACC Now and Then brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Duke's Seth Curry and his brother Stefan are now the highest scoring brother combo in NCAA Division I history. The sharpshooting Currys passed North Carolina great Tyler Hansbro and his brother Ben. Tyler, of course, is the ACC's all-time leading scorer with 2,872 points. Share the love this Valentine's with a free dessert when you make reservations on rubytuesday.com. Welcome back to Blacksburg. You are watching ACC women's basketball action on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Time to check out some of the highlights from the first half where the Duke Blue Devils shot 52%, took the lead right from the get-go, and Chelsea Shine, they never looked back. They certainly did, and Haley Peters is off to a great start. We saw her in the first 10 to 12 minutes, and then she got a little bit of a break there. 
Then you see there Elizabeth Williams out to Haley Peters again. She just, again, can shoot from anywhere on the court. But this Blue, Duke Blue Devils team has done such a great job. Elizabeth Williams is perfect from the field, five for five and four for four from the free throw line. They've just done a great job in this half in scoring. Then we take a look at the Virginia Tech Hoagies, where their leading scorer has taken one shot the entire game. Alyssa Fanine, a player who has stepped up for the team, she's perfect from the field as well. Three for three and one from one, one for one from threes. Um, and she's just stepped up for the Hokies, and we're going to have to look for her and Monet in the second half to step up even more. Fanine, leading scorer for Virginia Tech in the first half with seven. 52% for Duke from the floor, just 33% for Virginia Tech. That number for Duke above their season average of 47%, and they lead in rebounds as well, 13 to 10, and 18 turnovers in the first half for Virginia Tech. More to come on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Out with the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. 10 entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar, free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday, it's all good here. Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. I'm Jeff Michelle. coming up Friday at noon on ACC Live. Mike Jaminski is here to break down all of the weekend's action, including the big one between Miami and NC State. ACC Live, tip-off tomorrow at noon on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. What's better, bigger or smaller? Bigger! So which would you rather have, a big treehouse or a small treehouse? If it's big enough, you can have a disco. <laughs> Why do you not want a smaller treehouse? Because it wouldn't be able to fit a flat screen TV and then the TV would be about this big and you would have to hold the wire and the position would hold the wire, you wouldn't be able to see the TV. That's a pain in the buns. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's not complicated. Bigger is better. And AT&T has the nation's largest 4G network. Just moments away from the start of the second half here on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Duke and Virginia Tech. Duke number five in the country, 22 and one on the season, and they are perfect in ACC play for head coach Joanne P. McCauley, 12 and 0, looking to go to 13 and 0 and win their eighth in a row on the road in conference play. Amazing stuff, and there's Williams who remains perfect with a shot from close range. Absolutely, she was able to come off that screen and beat the Virginia Tech defender there to finish, and as you said, she continues to remain perfect from the field. And Williams is gonna have fresh legs because she sat out several minutes in the latter portion of the first half as she took a breather with the big lead that Duke had built. Haley Peters was able to get a nice lengthy break as well. So we'll see how long they hang in this game. Benign tried to track down the long rebound, couldn't do it. One of the statistics we talked about at halftime, we looked at the turnovers here, and it's been something, a theme that we've been talking about throughout this whole game, but 18 turnovers for the Hokies. Duke was able to turn them over 27 times the first time they played them. If you're the Hokies, you really need to find a way to take control and, and manage the ball on the offensive end. Chelsea Gray, desperate for a basket. She has not scored in the game. Williams got the offensive rebound. She also got fouled. That'll be the fourth on Nia Evans. Two shots for Elizabeth Williams, sophomore from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Up on those tippy toes again. <laughs> Interesting form, but it works. Lauren Evans had two points for the Hokies in the first half. Elizabeth Williams is a player that we've seen. She missed much of the preseason due to uh, an injury, but she's slowly recovered and, and seems to be 100%. Chelsea Gray has said that, that she seems like she's her old self again, working through that injury. But she's come back and, and seems to be full throttle at this point. Now she's got 18 points tonight, had 20 in the game on January 16th, the team high in that victory in the first meeting of the season between the two teams in Durham. Ray. 
had to give it up. Jones stepped into a jumper and knocks it down. Jones has been impressive for this team as well. Just a freshman, but she doesn't play like one. Wilson brings it up for the Hokies. Trailing here in the second half. Monet Tellier, who is their leading scorer, yet to get a point. Elizabeth Williams will pick up the foul for Duke. It's her second. Tellier. Williams came in and blocked it. Boy, she came out of nowhere from the weak side to get a piece. Yeah, she sure did. And she she just has a knack for the ball and, and her blocking ability. If you're down low with her, especially a guard, you need to use pump fakes because she's so good at reading where you put that ball. A block at the other end by Hannah Young. Ball goes out of bounds and stays with Duke. Elizabeth Williams can just come over from the help side and just swats it. She averages three a game and is nationally ranked. And so, like we said, you've got to be able to give her a few pump fakes underneath. Saved by Peters, right to Williams. Give her an even 20 for the game. Dennis Wolf wants to take a timeout for his Hokies. So we will also step aside for a moment. It's Duke leading Virginia Tech. What is the best dunk in ACC history? All month long, we want to find out. I'm Jeff Fischel, and welcome to Dunkuary. This is the month of Dunkuary, the fourth day of Dunkuary, or as I like to say, Dunkuary 4th. Go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash ACCDN, and vote for the best in ACC history. Hit subscribe while you're there. Out with the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. Ten entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar. Free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday. It's all good here. Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. Good afternoon, Chase Sapphire, this is Daisy from Springfield. Oh, hello. Hello? Yes, I didn't realize you'd be talking to an actual person. You don't need to come zero, I'm here. Reach a person, not a prompt, whenever you call Chase Sapphire. It's the ACC, it's live, it's ACC Live. Weekdays at noon on the ACC Digital Network. It's everything ACC fans want. Highlights, moments, interviews, and a lot of laughs. It's ACC Live, weekdays at noon only on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. We'll see you weekdays at noon on the ACC Digital Network with host Jeff Bichelle and Kelly Nash and all of the folks who work so hard at the ACC Digital Network to bring you all of that interactive content on the ACC Digital Network. Duke out in front here in the second half. Hokies in the white, Duke in the black. And Duke blue uniforms. Hokies wearing the Play for K initiative pink. Many of the teams having special games for fundraising and awareness. Absolutely. What an appropriate day to be wearing your pink uniforms as well. Valentine's Day. We certainly wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day. And thank you for sharing it with us. Tom Wormy, Chelsea Shine, and our outstanding ACC Digital Network production crew. Looks like that ball is going to go back to the Hokies on an offensive foul. You saw Alexis Lloyd battling down there with Haley Peters. And when post players get into fights down low, I mean, that, that's something when you were working on your footwork to get in front of a post player. If the offensive player is, is pushing or wrapping around, you can get the offensive call there. And that's what Alexis Lloyd did. There's Lloyd, the cutter. Off the pass from Hannah Young. That baseline is, is an area where they can expose Dukes as well. On their flex offense, she was able to cut over the lane. Haley Peters had her back turn. It was a good finish. First points of the second half for the Hokies. They're at Castle Coliseum. Historic Castle Coliseum. Williams shovels it to Peters. Just a little bit strong. 
kept by Duke. Now you've got three players on the deck. No ball situation. And the Hokies are going to get it. Again, Virginia Tech coming off a loss here at Castle Coliseum on Sunday against Virginia. But that was a close one, 50 to 47. And they had an eight point lead early in the second half and couldn't hang on. It was a close one. The Virginia Cavaliers in the second half switched up their defense going back from, from zone and man. And you, there you see Evans again at the free throw line. We talked about the baseline and the free throw lines being the areas to exploit this Blue Devil team. Lauren Evans is a freshman from Phoenix, Arizona. And she's got four points. Foul against the Hokies. The same type of foul as we saw before. The post players just battling for position, and it depends who wins the foot warp. That time it was Elizabeth Williams. So Hannah Young picked up the foul. Ariel Wilson comes out of the game, and Alex Kisrusk, number 21 for the Hokies, is in. Quick shot from Williams. She missed. Peters got hit, and she'll go to the free throw line. If you're the Hokies, you probably aren't going to uh, block many shots. This is a team that's averaging quite a few players over six feet, and so they need to stay on their feet and have their hands high in the air. And, and when you attempt to block shots when you're off balance, that's a lot of times when you get called for the foul. That miss by Williams before the Peters shot was her first miss of the game. Williams is now 7 of 8 from the floor and 6 of 6 from the line. Ellie Peters, who shoots 74% from the line on the season, has a couple and now has 15 in the game. Haley Peters and Chelsea Gray are roommates. Peters said um, they've, she's really seen her class develop into leaders. They've become more vocal on the court. Trisha Liston, of course, included in that group. And you've just seen over the years um, their maturity grow together as a class in the way that they lead this team. Lloyd will back it out for the Virginia Tech Hokies. Young lines it up and knocks it down from three-point range. That's her shot. When you give her space and a little bit of time to get her form set, she can knock that down from all over the perimeter. Third three of the season for Hannah Young and five points in total. Right back at you, it's Elizabeth Williams. Hokies have got to find a way to stop Elizabeth Williams before we saw them in the first half sending down a double team and and we don't see that double team coming down quite as quick and I think it's just because Elizabeth Williams does a great job of getting her shot up fast enough. National Freshman of the Year and All-American almost had a steal. Kiss Rusk, the miss. Here's Chelsea Gray. Jones on the wing. Elizabeth Williams has 22 points for Duke. Her teammate Haley Peters with 15. They collaborate here. Peters spins it off the glass for the bucket. Nice little touch there for Haley. Little spin off the rim or off the backboard. Excuse me. She finishes so well under the rim as well. I had the the great opportunity to play with her actually for one year in AAU. She's a very very competitive, hardworking player. Hannah Young again, this time it won't fall, and Williams comes down with a rebound. Difficult shot, she got the bounce. That's Haley Peters with 19. Just does a great job underneath that rim. She's a fun player to watch. I'm not sure the Hokies would agree with you, Chelsea Shine. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Fanine trying to get it low to Kiss Rusk. Can't do it. Duke, one of the top defensive teams in the entire country. And really smothering the offensive effort from the Virginia Tech Hokies with the shot clock at five. Evans puts it up, and she drops it in. There's another one late in the shot clock that we see fall for the Hokies. They've probably don't enjoy being late into the shot clock and having to take those shots, but when they fall there, they're good momentum for your team. Williams tried to follow her miss. Now it's taken back by Wells, and she drives it in. She misses, 
Evans comes away with it for Virginia Tech. No, those are just sometimes the chippy ones when you feel like you're so wide open and they're just too easy almost. Jones, the rebound for Duke. Up ahead, Williams missed. Fanine, Lloyd. This is a point where you haven't had a timeout in a while, but, but the teams have just been running back and forth and you can see they're getting a little bit, bit tired here. Chelsea Gray, that is her first basket of the game, coming off a career high 28 point performance in the win against Maryland on Monday. Tom, I think that's actually something that makes this team so special, though, is Chelsea Gray doesn't need to score 28 points a night for them to be successful. Tonight, Elizabeth Williams and Haley Peters are the one who stepped up, and, and Chelsea Gray can simply complement them. And, and it really, like we've been talking about, it makes this team a threat. They have so many weapons, both inside and out, and uh, they're, they're going to be a very hard team to beat in the ACC in the remainder of the, the regular season. Jones. Rattled out, Peters fighting for the loose ball and the foul against Hannah Young. So there's a timeout on the floor. Elizabeth Williams down to Peters who knows exactly what to do with it. What is the best dunk in ACC history? All month long, we want to find out. I'm Jeff Fischel, and welcome to Dunkuary. This is the month of Dunkuary, the fourth day of Dunkuary, or as I like to say, Dunkuary 4. Go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash ACCDN, and vote for the best in ACC history. Hit subscribe while you're there. Out with the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. Ten entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar free with any chef-inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday, it's all good here. Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. Good afternoon, Chase Sapphire. This is Stacey from Springfield. Oh, oh. Hello? Yes, I didn't realize you'd be talking to an actual person. You don't need to press zero, I'm here. Reach a person, not a prompt, whenever you call Chase Sapphire. Well, it's not February, it's Dunkuary. All month, we're figuring out the best dunks in ACC history. Follow us on Twitter, at the ACCDN, or go to our YouTube page to vote. Dunkuary, the best dunks in ACC history, all month long on the ACC Digital Network. It's not February, it's Dunkuary. And here in Blacksburg tonight, it is all Duke. We're glad that you are hopefully enjoying a snack on this Valentine's night and enjoying college basketball here on the ACC Digital Network brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Folks, you're watching one of the best teams in the entire country. Virginia Tech, which came in with a record of 8 and 15 and had won a great game on the road at Georgia Tech, has just run into a Duke team that is solid in all facets of the basketball game. Chelsea Shine. Absolutely. I mean, every, anytime that you come into a game looking to play Duke, you've just got to put your best game together. We talk about basketball as absolutely a game of two halves, and that's something that Duke's been working on, being able to put a first 20-minute half together and their second 20-minute half together. And I think that all teams strive to be great and play 40 minutes straight. Um, but but getting yourself up for a team like Virginia Tech, or excuse me, Duke, is such a great opportunity. And you know, Duke's been playing great basketball, and tonight we've just seen Monet Tellier struggle a little bit. Hell ball situation on the court. When we come back, the Duke Blue Devils will have possession. They own the lead as well. 11.51 to go. Here in the second half, you are watching the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Hey there, Kelly Nash with a question. What's the best dunk in ACC history? We're taking a month to find out, and we're calling it Dunkuary. You can follow it every day on our Twitter account, at the ACCDN. It's Dunkuary on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Out with the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. Ten entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar, free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday. It's all good here. 
Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. I'm Jeff Fischel. Coming up Friday at noon on ACC Live, Mike Jaminski is here to break down all of the weekend's action, including the big one between Miami and NC State. ACC Live tip off tomorrow at noon on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. What's better, bigger or smaller? Bigger! So which would you rather have, a big treehouse or a small treehouse? If it's big enough, you can have a disco. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why do you not want a smaller treehouse? Because it wouldn't be able to fit a flat screen TV, and then the TV would be about this big, and it would have to hold the wire, and the position it would hold the wire, you wouldn't be able to see the TV. That's a pain in the buns. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's not complicated. Bigger is better. And AT&T has the nation's largest 4G network. A reminder that the ACC Digital Network is fully interactive. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and of course on our official YouTube channel where you can leave comments and subscribe for instant notifications about our great content. If you're watching the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Tom Wormy, Chelsea Shine, and our outstanding ACC Digital Network production crew here in Blacksburg. So glad you have joined us on this Valentine's Day night. Settling in and watching one of the top teams in the country. Hokie steal it away from the Blue Devils. With 11.39 to go in the second half. Wilson. That's pretty much the night for the Hokies sure right there. Is. That's a tough, that's a tough drop there, but you know, that's that's kind of what they've been facing all night here. You see this double team again, but again, Duke's ability to find their, their teammates is just so good. And it's not just Chelsea Gray, it's all of them. Good stop by the Hokies though. Baron Array hustling back to get a piece of that one and knock it out of bounds. Interestingly enough for Duke, Chelsea Gray only has two points. And you look at Atricia Liston. There's Allison Baron Array. Liston has not scored either. Nope. And Liston is a player who averages 13 points per game, mostly coming off the bench for Duke. Recently, and, and that's a change that was made after the Connecticut game. Um, Chloe Wells into the starting lineup for the, the Blue Devils, and it, it kind of was one of those things that just worked out for them. Coming off the play, it's all about roles, and, and Trisha Liston's role as a three-point shooter, uh, amongst other things as well, but she just I kind of got into a little bit of a rhythm coming off the bench. There's Portia Hadley showing her range with a baseline jumper. That is Hadley's first basket of the contest. Duke keeps it, here's Liston. How often does that happen? You talk about a player who hasn't scored, she lines it up and knocks it down. Absolutely. It's almost as if she heard us. <laughs> so Liston into the box score with her first points of the night. Ten to go on the shot clock. Tell you, they ran into Farron Array. Tried to put up the shot because the shot clock was running down out of bounds, and it will be Duke ball. That's a tough shot to take when you've got two defenders on you. It means somebody else is open. But, um, you know, Tellier's, Tellier's struggling a little bit here, and, and her teammates kind of need to try to lift her up, but it's just been not a night for her so far. Monet Tellier, who was only 3 of 16 in the game against Virginia on Sunday, the struggles continue for her. Tellier 0 of 2 from the floor. Imagine that, just two shot attempts for your leading scorer. Gray with the follow away, no good. Hokies want to race it up. Lloyd, Wilson, a little too far under the basket, out of bounds to Duke. Chelsea Gray had the opportunity for a three down on the play before that, but I wonder if in her mind she said, you know what, I missed the last one. I'm going to try to take it to the rim a little bit closer. She did. She unfortunately missed this. Trisha Liston, she must have heard us, Tom. That's a three for her. She's ranked in the top 10 nationally as well with a great three-point shooting percentage. 48 made threes on 100 attempts this season. Second best in the conference and third in the nation at 47% for Trisha Liston. She's dangerous, so dangerous from around that arc. And, and uh, you know, the team knows that, and that's where they look to find her. Duke is the best three-point shooting team in the country as well. They produce a turnover. Now it goes right back to the Hokies. Wilson shoots it with the shot clock running down. What makes a good three-point 
three-point shooting team is not just their ability to shoot their three, it's their ability to recognize when is a good time and a good uh, possession to take the three-point shots. There's Elizabeth Williams, though. She's getting it done inside. And Duke's able to recognize both inside and outside when they're good shots. Elizabeth Williams now. 24 points on the night. Just one below her career high. She's set in the game against Georgia Tech. It's all about rhythms. As players, with both guards and posts, when you, you get yourself in a rhythm and, and you just feel it, and, and that's what it is. And as your teammates, they recognize that. They see that Elizabeth Williams hot, so they're looking for her inside especially. Gray got bumped. She dribbled into the paint. It'll be Ariel Wilson. First against Ariel Wilson. Elizabeth Williams is now 9 of 12 from the floor. Missed that one, but got it right back. Peters defended by Young. Traveling against Roche Jackson back to the Hokies. Tellier has come back into the game. Tellier going to look here in this last eight minutes to find her rhythm a little bit, I think. She just needs to get her composure back. She's got eight minutes to play here. If you're the Virginia Tech Hokies, at this point you really just want to focus on having good possessions offensively and getting as many stops as you can defensively. What were we just saying? Of course, Monet Tellier scores her jumper right there after we said so. She gets the rebound as well and starts the break. Tellier around three defenders with the layup. That's a good little segment. She scored and is able to come back on the defensive end and get the stop, and that's what you need as a player to get your confidence back up, and I think Monet Tellier is feeling it a little bit. Uh, Trisha Liston is also feeling it. Another three-pointer and eight points all in the second half for Liston. Liston has such a quick release, so you can only really give her one step, and when you go into double team, you have to make sure you get yourself back out there quick. She's made both of her three-point attempts the last six games, she's 50% beyond the arc. They didn't really need the offense here tonight against the Hokies, but Liston starting to get into the flow as Fanine goes by her. And then an offensive foul as Gray had the possession. So there's a timeout on the floor, 6.52 to go. You're watching the ACC Digital Network. With the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. Ten entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar. Free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday. It's all good here. Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. I'm Jeff Fischel. Coming up Friday at noon on ACC Live, Mike Jaminski is here to break down all of the weekend's action, including the big one between Miami and NC State. ACC Live, tip-off tomorrow at noon on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. What's better, bigger or smaller? Bigger! So which would you rather have, a big treehouse or a small treehouse? If it's big enough, you can have a disco. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why do you not want a smaller treehouse? Because it wouldn't be able to fit a flat screen TV in, and the TV would be about this big, and you would have to hold the wire, and the position you would hold the wire, you wouldn't be able to see the TV. That's a pain in the buns. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's not complicated. Bigger is better, and AT&T has the nation's largest 4G network. Welcome back to Castle Coliseum where it's been all about the Duke Blue Devils. Elizabeth Williams has two blocks already. She ranks third nationally and has blocked at least one shot in every collegiate game, but that's not all she's doing. She's scoring and she's scoring underneath, both down low, finishing just so well. And then she also has the ability to come and shoot from the high post area. Her teammates have done a great job of finding her and she has just taken off. She's got 24 points so far. Six rebounds, she's shooting nine for 14 for the team. And this is a young post player who has turned out to be a huge asset for this Duke Blue Devil team. Chelsea, you mentioned those two block shots. She now has 186 for her career as a sophomore, and that is fifth in school history at Duke University. Again, yeah. she is a sophomore, 
and the reigning freshman player of the year in the entire country. I have a feeling some records may be broken yes. by the time she's done at Duke. This is Williams. A little turnaround, and she got fouled in the act of shooting. So that is the fifth on Nia Evans. So she will have to be replaced. Alexis Lloyd will come in to replace Nia Evans. Williams at the free throw line with those 24 points. Her teammate Haley Peters with 19 give him 43 and 15 of 24 shooting. The rest of the team has 25 points. So not a bad effort from those two teammates. Absolutely. And as you've seen, it really just takes one to two players to, to carry the load of a team. And, and the rest of the team tends to fall behind you and just support you. Um, and that's kind of what you've seen here tonight as the Blue, Duke Blue Devils have really leaned on Haley and Elizabeth for their performance. That miss by Williams at the free throw line was her first of the night. Now with 25 points, Lloyd has to send it back out to Benign. 6.20 to go in the second half. Tellier steps into a three. This is Liston. Ray and Williams work it around to Peters. And the three ball goes for Haley Peters. That's great ball movement. You saw the ball go inside to, Ch to Elizabeth Williams from Chelsea Gray. It comes back out, and they work it around to Haley Peters. That's really what you need to do to shift your defense, and that's how uh, Haley Peters got open on that play, by, the, by Duke's patience offensively. Peters now four of five from beyond the arc. 22 points. You know, one thing that people were saying about Chelsea Gray after her performance Monday night and just throughout the whole season is is the way that she rewards her teammates. When she sees that Elizabeth Williams working hard underneath and is having a great game going to the boards, she finds her inside. She finds her in, transi in transition. Same thing with Haley Peters. She's seen Haley's been hot this game, seen her hit a few threes. So they worked the ball inside and out between the three of them, and Haley was able to score again. Yeah, that was quite a game for Chelsea Gray, the junior from Manteca, California against Maryland as Duke turns it over. Gray went for 28 points, a career high. It was 13 of 14 from the free throw line. Now, she only has two points in tonight's game, but it, the scoring slack picked up by her teammates, Elizabeth Williams and Haley Peters, both over 20 points in the contest. Chelsea Gray, a well-deserved rest on that Duke bench. Absolutely. One of the statistics that impresses me the most about Chelsea Gray, and we saw it a little bit earlier when she took the charge down underneath the Hokies basket, um, is her willingness to do the dirty work defensively. Chelsea Gray has leads the team with 16 charges on the year. She's just averages a couple steals a game, and she just does such a great job. It's not just offensively, but Chelsea works so hard on the defensive end as well, and that's some of the things that don't show up in the stat lines. We approach the five minute mark here in Blacksburg on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Alexis Lloyd is gonna pick up that foul for the Hokies. Tom, we keep referring to the game that the Duke Blue Devils had Monday night with Maryland. It'll be interesting to see these two teams go at it again in a couple weeks when the Blue Devils have to travel down to Maryland with Alyssa Thomas and Tiana Hawkins playing well, but not having the type of night that they usually do. I think it'll be another good matchup for the Blue Devils and could give them a run for their money, I'd say. Next game for Coach McCauley's team on the 17th as they host Wake Forest, Wake Forest and then another home game against Florida State. And then that Maryland game in College Park on February 24th. Score the basket for the Hokies. It's Wilson with a chance at a three-point play. She's quick. She's got a quick first step. That was a great take to the basket and a good finish. You saw her you saw her lean into the player there, and she was able to finish strong and get the foul. Baron Array returns to the game for Duke in control with 5.01 to go, and Wilson at the free throw line, just her seventh trip to the line on the season. It's 
Montpellier tried to fight for the loose ball, and the foul goes against Duke. Foul against Bernaret. So Lloyd to trigger the inbounds pass with exactly five minutes to go in the game from Castle Coliseum. Tried to try to dribble it off Trisha Liston's foot there in fear that she wouldn't be able to get it in time there, but I think Trisha might have seen that coming. Well, Duke is on its way to its 19th straight win in this series. And nine in a row here in Blacksburg against Virginia Tech. Well, they're a tough matchup. Duke is the one team that I never had the chance to beat when I was playing at Virginia. Blocked by Werner Ray with four seconds left on the shot clock. Sounds like that memory is still fresh in your mind, the fact that Duke had the edge it on is. your Virginia Cavaliers. <laughs> that was Peters trying to save that ball. And it's going to go back to the Hokies. Haley Peters, 22 points in the game. Duke still in their full pressure here. Full court pressure. Almost produces a steal by Wells. Wilson. Baseline Young. Kalia Johnson will bring it up for Duke. It's tough when your shots aren't falling. It seems sometimes it can be hard enough to get an open as look at that when you're playing against Duke and then when they're just not falling for you, it can make things a little harder. Peters had it taken away by Ariel Wilson. Little three on two. Evans, Wilson. Baron Array pulls it down for Duke. Baron Array certainly provides some size. The senior at 6-5 with the rebound for the Blue Devils. Liston handed it off to Peters. Little trick shot. She's going for style points she now. She sure is. She didn't even see the basket, I don't think, on that time. She's got a great ability to finish around the basket, though. She's got a great touch. Here's, here's Liston with a feed to Haley. Doesn't even take a look at the basket and she throws it over her right shoulder for the finish. About 24 points with Peters. And Dennis, Wolf, uh, Dennis Wolf's search for answers in that huddle for Virginia Tech will continue. Duke dominating the first meeting between the teams that in mid-January and the Blue Devils came out with a plan tonight and it worked. The plan was give Haley Peters the ball in the early going. She scored the first eight points, has gone on to score 24 in the game. Her teammate Elizabeth Williams, 25 to tie her career high tonight here in Blacksburg at Castle Coliseum. Well, if you're Duke, you look at this game and you've managed to put up more points than last time that Duke held you to. But at the same time, Virginia Tech was able to hold Duke to under their scoring average and allowing just 56 points, they were not able to replicate that tonight. And I think that's something that they were trying to do. Unfortunately, Duke just had the hot hand early between Elizabeth and Haley Williams and just got such a quick start. And we talked about it. It's hard to recover when Duke takes a lead on you like that. They're just such a good team that if you can't keep it close, it's, it's going to be a tough comeback. Monet Tellier with four points all coming in the second half. She really never got started in this game. In fact, just two of seven from the floor and 0 for two from long distance for Tellier, who averages 13 points per game, held to four tonight. Here is Tellier. Young, shot clock at two. Lloyd trying to put it up. Man, a shot clock violation against the Hokies. Duke's managed to do that quite a few times tonight. The Hokies just need to be able to recognize that. We'll see if they can continue to do that with three minutes left. Duke's on top. What is the best dunk in ACC history? All month long, we want to find out. I'm Jeff Fischel, and welcome to Dunkuary. This is the month of Dunkuary, the fourth day of Dunkuary, or as I like to say, Dunkuary 4. Go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash ACCDN, and vote for the best in ACC history. Hit subscribe while you're there.
Out with the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. 10 entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar, free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday, it's all good here. Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. Good afternoon, Chase Sapphire. This is Stacey from Springfield. Oh, oh. Hello? Yes, I didn't realize you'd be talking to an actual person. You don't need to press zero. I'm here. Reach a person, not a prompt, whenever you call Chase Sapphire. Our next live women's basketball game on the ACC Digital Network comes your way Thursday, February 28th. Boston College heads to Chapel Hill to face North Carolina. That's a 7 p.m. tip-off. On the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. On the Chapel Hill campus of North Carolina, B.C., coming to town. North Carolina has won two in a row, 10-2 and two in conference play for head coach Sylvia Hatchell, who got win number 900 this year against B.C. in Chestnut Hill just last week. Quite an accomplishment for Hatchell and her UNC team. What a great milestone. She's just among three coaches able to do that. See Vivian Stringer on her way with 899 wins. She gets a chance against UConn this weekend at home to get her 900th win that she's looking forward to getting it over with. It's been quite, quite a pressure, a lot of pressure when you're trying to reach a milestone like that. Fourth on Lloyd. is in the bonus here with Jackson at the free throw line. Just one foul away from the double bonus. With 2.57 to go in the game. And Duke has led the entire way, wire to wire tonight, against Virginia Tech. Coach McCauley closing in on win number 164 on that bench for the Blue Devils. You know, they are amazing at home as well at Cameron Indoor Stadium. 36 straight home wins against ACC opponents. You have to go all the way back to 2008 when Maryland beat them there in Durham. 36 in a row. It's a tough place to play. It's a, it's a different little bit of a different feel. It's a smaller arena, but you just know what you're getting yourself into when you walk into that arena. Just such historical programs. I've got some fond memories myself of playing in there. Got my teeth knocked out last year when I played, but you know, it's it, full recovery, so. Absolutely, the smile's looking good, Chelsea Shine. <laughs> Another shot clock coming down to three here. Evans. That's, got it away, it did not hit the rim though, so a violation. Yeah, was able to get the shot up, but just not, not able to recognize it quick enough. mentioned that Haley Peters, who is on the bench for Duke now with a double-double tonight, 25 points and 10 rebounds. For Peters, her fourth double-double, or correction, fifth double-double of the year and sixth of her career. Here is Evans out of the corner. Liston controls for Duke. That's what they've done all night as we go inside of two minutes. Spinning Jackson, she traveled. The tough move, that spin move, if you're going to do it, you got to get it right because it's easy to travel when you pick up your pivot foot. Elizabeth Williams, who has also left the game for Duke, 25 points to tie a career high and seven rebounds, a couple of blocks as well. The Hokies still having to work here in this full court pressure. Gotten lots of practice at their press break. Also for Coach McCauley overall, 480 career victories with tonight, and she is now 12 and one against Virginia Tech in her career, and a perfect 11 and 0 as the Duke head coach against Virginia Tech again. Duke has now won 19 in a row in the series. She seems like a, a fun person to play for. Haley Peters said she's a very energetic person all around. Goes out of bounds there by Tellier, but or Duke, I guess it is. 
She said Coach P is an all-around energetic player. Who you see on the court is the same type of person she is off the court as well. Very family-oriented and involved in the community, and her team kind of feeds off of that as well. What I also notice is the Hokies have continued to hustle after every single basketball, despite the fact that the scoreboard is very much in the favor of Duke, and there you see it, Virginia Tech gets a turnover. And that's what you can appreciate, not only about these two teams, but just the ACC in general, is the hustle and the fight that teams have. There's Kiss Rusk, Kiss Rusk excuse me, with the and one able to take it from an offensive rebound and finish off the glass. She'll go to the line for one now. First points of the game for Alex Kisrusk from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and Phillips Academy in Andover, Massachusetts is where she played her prep ball. Coming into the game is Lauren Evans for the Hokies. Got some world travelers on this Hokie team. Anna Youngs from Australia, Kiss Rusk from Canada, Uju Ugoka is from Nigeria. Hannah Young comes back in as well. Unfortunately for the Hokies, Ugoka is out with an injury. He's missed the last three games with a knee injury. We mentioned it earlier, but she provided 10 rebounds for the team last time they played Duke, and all around she's just been a good physical post presence for the Hokies in the time that she's been playing. So it's, it's a little bit of a loss to have her not here tonight to be able to battle down low against Williams and the, the Blue Devils. Shot clock at 10, game clock at 43 seconds to go from Blacksburg. Duke is led from start to finish. They turn it over here as they throw it out of bounds. Well, Tom, I'd say Duke's done a pretty good job of putting a full 40-minute game together here. It's something that they've been talking about and, and working towards playing two halves exactly the same at the level of intensity that they want to play. And they've, they've seemed to do a great job here tonight, both on the defensive and offensive end. Never gave the Hokies a chance. Haley Peters with the first eight points of the game and included a couple of threes. She and her teammates getting it done tonight. Wilson is the cutter. Lloyd on the offensive glass finds Wilson. Final eight seconds, Young. Pulled down by Liston, and that should do it. We certainly commend all of the student athletes involved in our game tonight, but Joanne P. McCauley and the Duke Blue Devils will improve to 23-1. They are 13-0 in conference play. Right now we go to the ACC Digital Network Studios with Jeff Fischel. Thanks, Tom. Another quick reminder about ACC Live tomorrow at noon. We continue Dunkuary, looking at the best dunks in ACC history, plus highlights, moments, and breakdowns with Chucky Brown. See you tomorrow at noon for ACC Live. Now back to Castle Coliseum. So it's a 77-33 victory for Duke and Chelsea Shine. That is seven in a row and eight in a row on the road against ACC opponents. Absolutely. The Blue Devils are just playing the best basketball they've played, and they're just such a hard team to beat right now, able to come on the road and play like this, and, and they can beat you at home as well. They've got so many players, but Elizabeth Williams and Haley Peters getting it done for the Blue Devils tonight. Those two players combining for 50 points. It was a 26 half point halftime lead for Duke, and they go on to the 77-33 win. They are 10-1 away from Durham and 7-0 in conference away. Don't forget our game on the 28th as our coverage of women's basketball continues on the ACC Digital Network. For Chelsea Shine, I'm Tom Wormy. So long from Blacksburg, you've been watching the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. <laughs>